Hi from the Bund of May, Transnistria. Transnistria is a narrow strip of land between Moldova and western Ukraine. It is an unrecognized breakaway state that left Moldova after the collapse of Soviet Union in 1990. It has de facto independence, but it is not so recognized by the UN. Now, Transnistria has close ties to Russia. Russia has long sought to keep Moldova in its political sphere of influence. Moldova is located between Romania and Ukraine. Now, Moldova applied for European Union membership in March 2022. However, the presence of Russian troops in Transnistria prevents Moldova from fully controlling its own borders. Without border and territorial control, Moldova cannot join the European Union. This is one of the conditions for EU memberships. Now let's look at the location of Moldova and Transnistria. Now, Moldova, Ukraine, and Romania. The area is sandwiched between Ukraine and Romania, and the area of Transnistria has three major regions, which is Kalbasana, Bayak, and Trisa Pol. Odessa port is adjacent to this area and is leading into Black Sea. Ismail is also a port city, inland port city, located adjacent to the Odessa port in the Black Sea. Now moving on to Falka Line Island dispute, that is Ilas Malvinas dispute. Now the government of Argentina has launched a campaign in India demanding negotiation with UK to settle the territorial dispute over Falka Land Islands. Now Falka Land Islands is an archipelago in South Atlantic Ocean. The islands have internal self-governance, and the UK takes responsibility for their defence and foreign affairs. The dispute has been continuing since the early 19th century. Both countries fought a war in 1982 over the dispute. The result was UK's victory. At present, Falkland Islands continue to operate as a self-governing British overseas territory. Stanley is an important city over here in the Falkland Islands, and uh, Argentina would be adjacent to the islands. And Atlantic Sea, Atlantic Ocean is the ocean which surrounds the island. Now moving on to Ines Vagshir. It is the sixth and last Scorpion class submarines made under the Project 75. It can join the Navy fleet within 12 to 18 months. It has been manufactured by Mazgao Dock Shipbuilders Limited in collaboration with Naval Group France. It has been named after the sandfish, a deep sea predator, that is Vakshir. It is a diesel attack submarine. It can reach a top speed of 11 knots at surface and 20 knots when submerged. It is also enabled with anti-torpedo countermeasure systems. Its superior stealth features include advanced acoustic absorption techniques and low noise levels. Now moving on to air independent propulsion systems. AIP technology allows a conventional submarine to remain submerged for much longer than ordinary diesel electric submarines. Conventional submarines have to come to surface to run the generators which recharge the batteries that allow the boat to function underwater. However, this makes them susceptible to detection. Air independent propulsion allows a submarine to remain submerged for more than a fortnight compared to 2 to 3 days for diesel electric boats. Under the Project 75i project, India is looking for AIP based on fuel cells. Now moving on to Samrat missile. Samrat is an intercontinental ballistic missile developed by Russia. Sarmat. Sarmat is the missile's name it has been named after nomadic tribes that roamed the steppes of present day southern russia ukraine and kazakhstan it is designed to elude anti missile defense systems it is a three stage liquid fueled missile with a range of 18000 kilometers moving on to advanced towed artillery gun systems that is atags it is a large caliber gun system with the capability to program and fire future long range guided munitions to achieve precision and deep strike it has been developed by drdo and manufactured by bharat forge and tata power sedes It has a firing range of 48 kilometers. It can fire three rounds in 15 seconds in burst mode, and as many as 60 rounds in 60 minutes in sustained mode. Now moving on to National Cyber Security Incident Response Exercise. It is conducted by the National Security Council Secretariat in association with Data Security Council of India as the knowledge partner. The exercise support is supported by DRDO. It aims to train senior management and technical personnel of government on critical sector organizations and agencies on contemporary cyber threats and handling cyber incidents and response. Moving on to Shikula Tunnel. Now Shikula Tunnel will be built at Shikula Pass at an altitude of 16,580 feet. The tunnel will be 4.25 kilometers in length. It will provide all weather connectivity between Ladakh and Himachal Pradesh. It will be built by BRBO, that is BRO, bro, under Project Yojak by 2025. It will be the world's longest and highest tunnel. Shikula Pass is mountain pass between Zanskar Valley in Ladakh and Lahul Valley in Himachal Pradesh. This may be considered as entry point into Lungnak Valley in Zanskar. So this is the outlay of the proposed tunnel. Le, Nimo, Padum, Shinkula, Darja, and Manali. This would be the uh, highway that will be connecting Le to Manali. That is in Himachal Pradesh, and Shinkula is the uh, pass that is connecting Ladakh with the Himachal Pradesh state. Now, moving on to Trilateral Development Corporation Fund. It has been launched by the Ministry of External Affairs. It aims to provide alternative to Chinese development partnership models that has pushed parts of the developing world into a debt trap. The world, the fund would involve private sectors with state support for big ticket investments in the Indo-Pacific region as well as other geographies. India's Global Innovation Partnership (GIP), launched in association with GIC, United Kingdoms, will provide a template to use Trilateral Development Corporation Fund for trilateral projects. Countries like Japan, Germany, France, and European Union are willing to work with India in the field of development and innovation. Now, moving on to Global Innovation Partnership, it has been launched by Government of India and UK in 2021. Its purpose is to support Indian innovators to scale up their innovations in third country. Under Global Innovation Partnership, Indian entrepreneurs and innovators will receive seed funding, grants, investments, and technical assistance. 
Now, global security initiative. The Chinese president has proposed a global security initiative. It is a Chinese China's initiative to make up for the global security deficit and guard world peace and tranquility. The initiative seeks to counter the U.S. Indo-Pacific strategy and Quad. Moving on to blue straggler stars. Blue straggler stars are hot blue massive stars and us and seems to have a different trajectory of evolutions from the norm. Generally, though they grow brighter and hotter when they are expected to cool down. They are called stragglers because they lag other stars in evolution. Now, Sophia Telescope. Sophia stands for Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. It is a 2.7 meters infrared telescope sitting inside a Boeing 747 peep airplane. The plane flies at an altitude of 38,000 to 45,000 feet above the surface of Earth. It is the world's largest flying telescope. The telescope has made important discoveries like presence of water on moon in Clivus crater in 2020. It also discovered helium hydride, the first molecule formed in universe almost 14 billion years ago. NASA has decided to shut down Sophia telescope. Moving on to mass quake, US has reported that its InSight mass lander has detected the largest quake ever observed on another planet, that is Mars. On Earth, quakes are caused by shifts in tectonic plates. Mars does not have tectonic plates and its crust is a giant plate. NASA noted that mass quakes are caused due to stresses that cause rock fractures or faults in their crust. Moving on to InSight mission, the interior exploration using seismic investigation, geodesy and heat transport, that is the InSight mission, is a robot robotic lander designed to study the interior of ma planet Mars. It is part of NASA's discovery program. The objective of the mission is to determine the rate of Martian tectonic activity and meteoroid impacts. Moving on to Arendel stars, now NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has di discovered the farthest stars ever to seen to date. It has been nicknamed as Arendel, it means morning star in Old English. The star is more than 12.9 billion light years away and likely existed within the first billion years after the beginning of the universe. The star has been discovered by the phenomena of gravitational lensing. Now moving on to gravitational lensing, Einstein's general theory of relativity predicts that light can bend by gravity. Now, gravitational lensing occurs when a huge amount of matter like cluster of galaxies create a very strong gravitational field. This field distorts and magnifies the light from distant galaxies that are behind it but in the same line of sight. The effect is looking like looking through a giant magnifying glass. The effect allows researchers to study the details of early galaxies too far away to be seen with the current technology and telescopes. Moving on to India's patents record, the National Association of Software and Service Companies, that is NASCOM, has released India Patent Report. Indian companies have filed 1.38 lakh tech patents in India from 2015 to 2021. Startups have been key contributors in terms of technology innovation. Over 60% of the technology patents were filed by Indian companies and startups, while 16.7% of the tech patents were filed by individual inventors and academia research. Artificial intelligence continue to lead in terms of total patents filed under various emerging technology domains. Moving on to plasma-based COVID-19 disinfectant. Researchers have developed a plasma-based disinfectant. It can act as a green decontaminant for COVID-19. This disinfectant has the potential to deactivate SARS-CoV-19 to spike proteins, which binds to human ACE2 receptors for in reducing viral infections. It has been generated with the help of cold atmospheric pl pl pressure plasma. It can limit the spread of inf infectious disease through contact. Now, plasma is the fourth stage of matter which makes up for the most of the universe. When produced in controlled conditions in lab, it is termed as cold atmospheric pressure plasma. Now, PK2 molecules for treatment of diabetes. Now, researchers at IIT Mundi have identified a drug molecule called PK2 that can be used to treat diabetes. Diabetes is associated with insufficient insulin released by beta cells of the pancreas in response to blood glucose levels. Now, PK2 is able to trigger the release of insulin by pancreas and can potentially be used as an orally administered drug for diabetes. Moving on to tomato flu. Tomato flu got its name from the tomato-shaped blisters it causes on the body. The flu is affecting children below the age of 5 in Kerala. The affected children can get blisters, high fever, body ache, joint swellings and fatigue. Now, tomato fever is contagious. This flu is self-limiting and there is no specific drug for this. This means that the, system will that the symptoms will resolve over time on their own if supportive care is given. Moving on to blue bob, it is a cold patch of sea located south of Iceland and Greenland. The cold patch was most prominent during the winters of 2014-15 when the sea surface temperature was 1.4 degree cooler than normal. According to a study, blue blob may have developed temporarily stalled the melting of Arctic sea ice. However, study has also stated that the effects of climate change will catch up to the massive ice chunk if temperature are not kept in check. Moving on to Patnal Wetland. Patnal Wetland. So, Patnal Wetland is a natural region encompassing the world's largest tropical wetland area, the world's largest flooded grassland. It is located in Brazil with slight extension in Bolivia and Par Paraguay. The vegetation of Patnal, often referred as Patnal Complex, is a mixture of plant communities, moist tropical Amazonian rainforest plants, semi arid woodland plants, and savanna plants. The apple snail is a keenstone species here. In Patnal's ecosystem, some parts of wetland fall under the UNESCO's World Heritage List and UNESCO's Biosphere Reserve. The wetland is at the risk of collapse due to a series of decisions that aim to open up the wetland to more intensive use, collectively threaten the long-term survival of the ecosystem. Moving on to India's first green hydrogen plant, 
Oil India Limited (OIL) has commissioned India's first pure green hydrogen pl pilot plant in Jorhat pump station in Assam. The plant produces green hydrogen from electricity generated by existing 500 kilowatt solar plant using a 100 kilowatt anion exchange membrane electrolyzer array. The use of anion exchange membrane technology is being used for the first time in India. Now, anion exchange membrane, that is AEM technology, is electrolysis is the process of splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. The electrolyzer is a system that uses electricity to break water into hydrogen and oxygen through electrolysis. Typically, electrolyzers use proton exchange membrane, that is PEM, to produce hydrogen. This method needs expensive metals like platinum and ruthenium to remain in acidic environment. Anion exchange membranes is an alternate to this method. It uses alkaline conditions, so there is no need for expensive metals. The material involved in AEM are thus some 3000 times less expensive than PEM. Moving on to Government Order 111, that is GO 111 on lakes in Hyderabad. In 1996, the then government of Andhra Pradesh had issued GO 111 prohibiting development or construction workers in the catchment area of Osman Sagar and Himayat Sagar lakes up to a radius of 10 km. This was done to protect the catchment area and to keep reservoirs pollution free. The lakes were the main source of drinking water for Hyderabad city at that time. The city no longer depends on these two reservoirs for water supply. The government of Telangana has withdrawn the order now. The decision is being criticized by environmentalists. Environmentalists have said that these reservoirs are still an important water source for the city. Now, Murugavani National Park between the twin reservoirs and the entire area acts as heat absorption unit for the city. Loss of green cover will increase intensity of heat waves. Moving on to Osman Sagar and Himayat Sagar lakes, Osman Sagar and Himayat Sagar lakes were built in 1920 and 1927 respectively under the last Nizam era ruler Mir Osman Ali Khan. They were built after devastating 1908 floods in Hyderabad. The reservoirs were created by building dams on river Musi. Musi is also known as Musa or Mukchan. Mukunda. It is a major tributary of Krishna river. Moving on to Grace, Grace Center Loris. The Grace Center Loris belongs to the family Loriente. The IUCN red list status is near threatened and is classified as Appendix 2 in sites. It comes under wildlife, Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. It is commonly found in southern India and Sri Lanka. It has long and slender limbs, large ears, and a pointed snout and eyes circled with black or dark brown color. The fur is soft and woolly. The color varies from dark gray to earthy brown. It is a nocturnal and slow-moving animal. It is insectivorous animal, though it eats berries also. The loris has become threatened mainly because of habitat loss. Moving on to fishing cat, it is a wild cat feline feline species. It is state animal of West Bengal. It is found primarily in wetlands and mangrove habitats. IUCN red list status is endangered as is, and is classified in Appendix 2 of sites. Schedule 1 of Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. They are found in South and Southeast Asia. In India, the cats are found in the foothills of Himalaya along the Ganga and Brahmaputra River Valley, the Western Ghats, Sundarbans in West Bengal, Chilika Lagoon, Koringa and Krishna mangroves in Andhra Pradesh. It is an elusive nocturnal mammal. The fishing cat is an adept, apt swimmer and enters water frequently to prey on fish. The cat is threatened by habitat loss, that is wetland degradation and conversion for aquaculture and other commercial projects and sand mining along rivers etc. Moving on to tailless lime blue butterfly, ecologists have spotted tailless lime blue for the first time in Delhi. Now tailless lime blue or small purple lime blue is a blue butterfly species found in Asia to Australia. The species was first discovered by George Semper in 1879. The sighting confirms migration of tailless lime blue butterflies from areas high in moisture. The migration might have happened from the Himalayan foothills, indicating that the range of this butterfly is extending. Studying solitary insects like butterfly is very important and can be used as a very effective tool to understand climate change, global warming, especially for a city like Delhi. Moving on to new species of L, that is Erisoma indicum. A new species of L named Erisoma indicum has been discovered in the Kalamukku and Digha Mohana fishing harbour in coastal waters of Kerala and West Bengal respectively. It is an eel species that belongs to the concrete eels group. The term indicum indicates that it was found in India. There are seven species of Arisoma genus documented in India, which includes this newly identified eel. Moving on to Vacuita propois. Now, propois are among the smallest members of Cartesian family, that is whales, propois, and dolphins. They are distant relatives of dolphins. Vacuita propois is world's smallest Cartesian. Its name means little cow in Spanish. IUCN red list status is critically endangered and it falls in Appendix 1 of sites. It is found only in the northern Gulf of California, that is Sea of Cortes, in Mexico, most commonly seen in shallow waters up to 50 meters deep. It is unique among the propoises as it is the only species of that family found in warm waters. The United States Commission for Environmental Cooperation, CEC, has said that Vacuita propois is nearing extension. Moving on to new species of cherry blossoms, that is Purunu dinbanduna. Now, scientists from Manipur have found a new plant species of cherry blossoms and have named it Purunus dinbandhunan. It grows up to 25 to 30 meters in dense 
mixed evergreen forest. Unlike Jap Japanese cherry blossoms, which blossoms during March, April, this new species blossom in November. The plant has been named as a mark of respect for outstanding contributions of Dr. Dean Bandhu Sahu. Due to Dr. Sahu's effort, cherry blossom is now available in six of the eight northeastern states, excluding Assam and Tripura. Now moving on to Ramgar, Vishdhari Wildlife Sanctuary, declared as the 52nd Tiger Reserves. Now Ramgar Vishdhari Wildlife Sanctuary has been notified as a Tiger Reserve. It is India's 52nd Tiger Reserve and Rajasthan's fourth after Ranthambore, Sariska and Mukundhara. Mukundra. It is located mostly in Bundi, Vilwada and Kota districts in Rajasthan. The government of Rajasthan has declared it as a sanctuary in 1982 under Section 5 of Rajasthan Wildlife and Bird Protection Act of 1951. The sanctuary is home to Indian wolf, leopard, striped hyena, chinkara, antelope and foxes among other animals. It acts as a buffer for Ranthambore National Park. Experts note that while Ramgarh doesn't have a high tiger population, it plays a critical role in movement of tigers. The sanctuary connects Ranthambore Tiger Reserve with Mukundra Hill Tiger Reserve and will become an important tiger corridor. So Rantham Tour Tiger Reserve Buffer Zone, Jawar Sagar Sanctuary and this would be the core zone, this is going to be the buffer zone and this is the forest compartment with diverted mining lease. Jaipur, Ramgad and Kota. So uh, Ramgad Tiger Reserve would lie between Jaipur and Kota. There is a long distance between Jaipur and Kota so uh, this covers a very large area. The new reserve will also help in controlling the overpopulation of tigers in Rantampur. Currently the Rantampur Tiger Reserve houses 80 tigers over 1,334 square kilometers, densely populated. Moving on to Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, the fourth edition of International Conference on Disaster Resilient Infrastructure was held recently. The purpose of the conference was to explore ways to strengthen the resilience of transitioning infrastructure system, with emphasis on human-centered approach. Now, CDRI is a multi-stakeholder global partnership of national governments, UN agencies and programs, multilateral development banks, private sectors, academic and knowledge institutions. It was launched by the PM of India at the 2019 UN Climate Action Summit in September 2019. Its secretariat is in New Delhi, India. 39 members consisting of 31 national governments and 8 organizations have joined CDRI. The CDRI is the second major coalition launched by India outside the UN. The first being the International Solar Alliance. Both of them are seen as India's attempt to obtain a global leadership role in climate change matters. Macaulay Convention. Now, the Convention of European the Council of European Convention on Manipulation of Sports Competitions, better known as Macaulay Convention, is a multilateral treaty that aims to prevent, detect, punish match fixing in sports. The convention was concluded in Macaulay, Switzerland in 2014. A major focus of the convention is to prevent and punish illegal sports betting operations and to prevent conflicts of interest between legal sports betting operators and sport organizations. The 12th meeting of Interpol's match fixing task force concluded with a call to harmonize global efforts to curb competition manipulation. CBI was one of the participants at this meeting. Moving on to integrated command and control centers, ICCCs are integral components of smart city missions. These are designed to enable authorities to monitor the status of various amenities in real time. They are aimed at controlling and monitoring water and power supply, sanitation, traffic movement, integrated building management, city connectivity, internet infrastructure among other parameters. Now ICCCs act as a nodal point of availability of all online data and information relating to smart services. Hence they act as nerve center of a smart city. The government has announced that 80 integrated command and control centers have already been set up while the remaining 20 will be completed by 15th of August 2022. Moving on to Finculation, India Post Payment Banks have announced the launch of Finculation. It is a joint initiative collaboration with fintech startup community to co-create and innovate solutions for financial inclusion. Under this initiative, startups are encouraged to develop solutions aligned with any of the following tracks, that is creditization, digitization, any market-led solution that can solve problems related to Indian Post Payment Bank or Department of Post in serving the target customers. Moving on to Consumer Expenditure Survey, it is conducted by National Statistics Office every five years. The aim is to collect information on the consumption spending patterns of household across the country. The data helps to generate estimates of household monthly per capita consumer expenditure. The data helps from the survey was used to arrive at estimates of poverty levels in the country and to review economic indicators like GDP since 2011-12. In 2019, the government had decided not to release the result of All India Household Consumer Expenditure Survey conducted during 2017-18, citing the data quality issues. The next consumer expenditure survey is expected to be completed by 2023. Moving on to Association of Asian Electronic Election Authorities. India has been unanimously elected as the chair of Association of Asian Election Authorities for 2022-24 at Manila, Philippines. The Association of Asian Election Authority was established in 1998. Its purpose is to promote and institutionalize open and transparent elections, independent and impartial elections authority, citizen participation in the electoral process. At present, 30 Asian election management bodies are member of AAEA, it is also an associate member of Association of World Election Bodies, that is AWEB. Now moving to Association of World Election Bodies, it is the largest association of election management bodies worldwide. 
It was established in 2013. The permanent secretariat is located in Seoul, South Korea. At present, it has 118 election management bodies as members and 20 regional association organizations as associate members. It was established with the vision of achieving sustainable democracy across the world. AWEB undertakes election visitors and observation programs in various countries to study various election management practices and share knowledge with other members of EMB. Moving on to National Open Access Register. It has successfully gone live from 1st of May 2022. It has been launched by the Ministry of Power. It is a centralized online platform through which short-term open access to interstate transmission system is being managed. The platform is accessible to all stakeholders including open access participants, traders, power exchange and national regional state load dispatch centers. The National Open Access Register is is the key to facilitate faster electricity markets and enable the integration of renewable energy resources into the grid. Now the Digital India RISC 5 RISC 5 microprocessor program that is DIR 5 program it has been launched by ministry of electronics and information technology it aims to enable the creation of microprocessors and achieve industry grade silicon and design wins by december 2023 it will promote partnerships between startups academia and multinationals to make india a supplier of rics 5 system on chips for servers mobile devices automotives internet of things and microcontrollers it madras and center for development of advanced computing that is cdac have developed two microprocessors name shakti which is 32 bit and vega which is 64 bit respectively under the microprocessors development program moving on to malchal mahal delhi government is about to renovate this 14th century monument it is located in chanakyapuri in delhi it was built in 1325 by sultan firoz shah tughlaq and was used as a hunting lodge for a long time it later became the residence of descendants of nawab of awadh it came to be known as vilayat mahal after vikum vilayat mahal of awadh who claimed that she was a member of the royal family of awadh She was given the palace by the government in 1985. The monument is not in ASI protected, and therefore no attention was paid to it in all these years in order to conserve it. Moving on to Azadi ki Amrit Kahaniya, it has been launched by Ministry of Information and Broadcasting in collaboration with OPTT platform Netflix. It aims to bring out stories of infer- inspirational Indians on various themes, including women empowerment, environment, and sustainability, and others. In the first phase, short videos featuring women change makers from across the country will be released. These include. Poonam Nutyal, a healthcare worker who walked miles across Bageshwar district in Uttarakhand to vaccinate people for COVID-19 vaccines. Dr. Tessie Thomas, the first woman scientist to head a missile project in India. Tanvi Jagdish, India's first competitive women stand-up paddleboarder among others. Moving on to India International Center for Buddhist Culture and Heritage. The Prime Minister of India laid the foundation stone for International India International Center for Buddhist Culture and Heritage in Lumbini, Nepal. It will be constructed by the International Buddhist Confederation with financial support from Ministry of Culture Government of India. The center is being created with a view to promote Buddhist philosophy and teachings of Gautam Buddha. This Buddhist center will be the first net zero emission building in Nepal. Moving on to National Film Heritage Mission, it was launched in 2016 by the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Its aim is to preserve, restore and digitize India's cinematic heritage. It is being implemented by National Film Archives of India. It is one of the world's largest film preservation mission. Now NFAI was set up in 1964 as a media unit of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. It is headquartered in Pune, Maharashtra. Moving on to Hathi community of Himachal Pradesh, the Hathi community is largely concentrated in the Trans Giri area of Sirmaur district in Himachal Pradesh. The community is named after their old age, age old professional practice of selling their home grown crops at small practice markets called Hat in nearby cities. The Hathis are governed by a traditional council called Kumbali, which decides community matters. Now the Kumbali's powers has remained unchallenged despite the establishment of Panchayati Raj system. Hathis are demanding ST status. They have social and cultural similarities. with the josar community of the josar bavar area of uttarakhand now junsar bavar was part of erstwhile sirmaur princely state josar community has enjoyed tribal status since 1967 in up and uttarakhand moving on to bionest scheme bionest stands for bio incubators nurturing entrepreneurship for scaling technologies it has been launched by biotechnology industry research assistant council that is birak it aims to foster the biotech innovation ecosystem in the country by creating globally competent bio incubation facilities across the country Moving on to National Behavioral Behavior Change Communication Framework for Garbage Free Cities. It has been launched by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs under Swachh Bharat Mission Urban 2.0. Its aim is to strengthen ongoing Jan Andolan for garbage free cities. The framework serves as a guiding document and blueprint for states and cities to undertake large scale multimedia campaigns along with intensive and focused interpersonal communication campaign. The framework focuses on intensifying messaging according around the key focus areas of source segregation, collection, transportation, processing of waste, plastic waste management etc.